So Jesus, we come to you now. Fill our hearts now. Fill this place with your presence. At this point, we will sing this part of the song, but we'll really dedicate ourselves to the Lord. Are you ready? I invite you now, make this a very special time of you talking to your God. Amen? Amen. Just raise your hands now if this is comfortable for you. And from the heart, sing this song.
Yes, Lord, here is your people. Give a hand to the Lord. Give a hand to the Lord. Give a shout to the Lord. We love you, Lord. We declare you, Lord, over our lives. We declare you, Lord, over this place, over this day, over our hearts. Thank you, Lord. We will listen to you. You are our Redeemer. We will never be shaken. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. That in the Father and the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's give a hand to the Lord, brothers and sisters. Praise God. Praise God. Could you all be seated, brothers and sisters? Tell the person beside you, you're going to be immensely blessed. Please tell that. You're going to be immensely blessed today. Amen. Everybody take a deep breath. Brothers and sisters, for those who have just come in, we just like to thank you once again. We like to thank you once again for the love that you have given to the Lord by coming here. Amen. Could you please tell the person beside you, thank you for being here. Please tell the person there, go. Thank you for being here. Amen. The Lord is so happy that you are here, and I'm sure you're happy to be here. Yes? We are going to start powerfully this day with a talk by a very good friend of mine. Many of you know him because he's one of our builders here in Feast Alabang District. Allow me to introduce him to you. He started preaching at the age of 17. Grabe. Tignan niyo ang katabi ninyo. Ilang taon na yan? Nag-a-attend ng recollection, di ba? Ganun lang naman. Hindi pa naman ako tapos. But brothers and sisters, going back to our speaker, our speaker started a youth group, or he was in a youth group. He served as the leader, as the music director. Nung 17 years old pa lang siya. He's a gifted preacher who has been invited to different Catholic communities like Couples for Christ, Ligaya ng Panginoon, and Mary Help of Christians Prayer Community, to name a few. He also has been invited to give sales trainings, values formations, and team buildings to different companies like Toyota Philippines, Robinsons, and SM Group of Companies, among others. Currently, he is taking up his Master's in Religious Studies at Don Bosco Center of Studies. He is the Feast Builder of Feast SM South Mall. <laughs> he is married to Engineer Veronica Nicolas and a father to Miguel Paolo, Patricia Andrea, and Luis Nicolas. Brothers and sisters, let us please welcome my brother, a great person, a great friend, a great father and husband, a blesser of people. Give a round of applause to Brother James Nicholas. Good morning! Can you greet the people around you and tell them good morning to you? For those who do not know me, hindi importante kung sino ako. Tanong niyo ako bakit? Kasi hindi ko rin kayo kilala. No, I'm, I'm James Nicolas and I'm the Feast Builder of Peace SM South Mall. But before we... Oh, may mga taga-South Mall yata rito may pumapalakpak. Ano? Ayun, ayun. Nandun pala. 
Before I start with our talk, can I honor my wife? Is, is that okay? Before I give a talk, especially to big gatherings, I want people to know her because what I do now, preaching God's word, will not be possible if she will not allow me to. Kaya gusto ko sanang i-honor yung aking paboritong may bahay. My favorite wife. Tayo ko naman. Ayan. Yan yung aking may bahay. Siguro sabi nung iba, favorite? Naku, chick boy. No, chick boy ang preacher. Hindi yun. Hindi. Favorite ko yan. Kasi iisa lang. Pero mo pag isa na lang, hindi mo pa favorite. Nakakaawa. Ano? Kaya dapat favorite. So friends, this morning, allow me to start the Holy Week recollection with the first talk. Are you ready? Can I invite you to stand? This morning, we will ask the Lord to, to speak to us. And I will share with you three important things of how the cross redeems us. Are you ready? Before we start, pwede, pwede bang sabihin mo dun sa katabi mo, I'm happy. Kasi ang cute ng katabi ko. Pwede bang bumawi ka? Sabihin mo nga sa kanya, I hope I can say the same. <laughs> so are you ready for God's word for you? And so if you're ready, let's pray. Our favorite prayer here in the feast, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today, I receive all of God's love for me. Today, I open myself to the unbounded, limitless, overflowing abundance of God's universe. Today, I open myself to God's blessings, healing, and miracles. Today, I open myself to God's Word so that I become more like Jesus every day. Today, I proclaim that I am God's beloved. I am God's servant. I am God's powerful champion. And because I am blessed, I am blessing the world. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's honor the word of God. Thy word is the lamp unto my feet and the light unto my path. Let's read together. Luke 23, verse 46. Let's read. Father, into your hands I command my spirit. And when he had said this, he breathed his last. Can you say that? I command my spirit. Can you place your hand over your heart and repeat this prayer after me? Father, this morning, I pray that you teach me how to be like Jesus, trusting in you, putting all my hopes in your love. May I always say to you, in your hands, I command my spirit. And I pray this. In Jesus' name, amen. Thy word is the lamp unto my feet and the light unto my path. Let's give God a big hand. And if you believe that God will speak to you this morning, can I ask you to make some joyful noise to Him? Praise you, Jesus. You can be seated. This is the one big message of my talk this morning. Are you ready? The one big message is this. Your victory happens when you believe that God knows better. Can you say that? This morning, I will share with you three things that the cross of Jesus redeemed us from. Three things. Ilan? Tatlo. 
Let's go to the first one. The first one is this. The cross redeems us of redeems trust in times of detour. Sabi nyo nga, detour. Alam nyo ngayon, ay, paboritong paborito kong gamitin ang ways. Sino sa inyo gumagamit ng ways? Sinong nakakaalam ng ways? Sinong walang pakialam? You know, but before going to, to that, what do you think is the primary purpose of Jesus? Ano sa tingin niyo yung primary purpose why He came to the world, the primary mission of Jesus. Alam niyo ko ano? Can I shock you? Ayan, ayan, mga taga South Mall yan. Alam niyo sa South Mall, pag sinasabi kong can I shock you or can I give you a shocking statement, sinasabi nila ganito, <sighs> Sige, subukan niyo. Ayan, may tunog pa, ha? Pero dahil nasa Holy Week recollection tayo, medyo dapat, medyo mas iba yung level, ha? Pag sinabi kong shocking statement, ganito yung sasabihin nyo, What? <laughs> Can you do that? Everybody, one, two, three. Ayan. <laughs> Sabi mo nga doon sa katabi mo, ang laki pala ng bibig mo. This is the primary mission of Jesus. His primary mission is not to die on the cross, but to introduce the Father's love. Oh, wala na. <laughs> Ulitin ko. The primary mission of Jesus is not to die on the cross, but to introduce the Father's love. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the, totoo yun, ha? The primary purpose of Jesus, the primary mission of Jesus is to introduce the Father's love. And in the process, He needed to give His life. You know, his death on the cross is the detour from his original purpose. Detour siya. Bakit? Kasi ang gusto niya ipakita ay pagmamahal ng Diyos, yun ang gusto niya introduce. But he died on the cross. Friends, sometimes God allowed or allows detours to our life. Sino sa inyo ang gumagamit ng ways again? Like, tanong ko kanina. You know, I, ako, I, I always use ways now. Kung saan man ako pumunta, minsan kahit alam ko na yung lugar, ginagamitan ko ng ways. May kaibigan ako, grabe, grabe sa ways. Yung, alam mo yung kahit sa bahay nila, nagwe-ways. <laughs> Kasi laki ng bahay niya, yung pagpupunta ka dun sa, dun sa CR niya, gagamit ka ng tricycle, ganun kalaki yung bahay. Yung pagpupunta ka sa kainan, no? merong may, may bus, ganun kalaki. Sabi ko sa amin, hindi, hindi, hindi ko kailangan ng ways. Kasi sa amin, pag yung mga bata nandun sa kwarto natutulog at tatawagin ko sa pagkain, bubulong lang ako nandyan. Ah. Dalawang hakbang lang, ayun na yung tulugan at kainan. Sa pera itong kabidbahe ko, grabe. He always use ways. And, and ako, I always use ways where, wherever I go. Kahit saan ako pumunta, kahit alam ko na yung pupuntahan ko na, ginagamitan ko pa ng ways. But sometimes, sabi nyo nga sometimes, I doubt ways. Bakit? Kasi tama ba, pag nagwe-waste kami, isang pagtinignan mo, ba't parang mas mahaba yung biyahe? Tama? Mas mahaba yung biyahe. Yung inbis na shortcut, nagiging long cut. <laughs> sa Pilipino lang yung long cut eh, no? Pilipino lang yan. Wala ka maraming sa ibang bansa niya. Pero sa atin, di ba? Long cut. Inbis na shortcut, ano nangyayari? Humahaba pa. Humahaba. Kaya minsan, ang ginagawa ko, Hindi ko masyado sinusunod si Waze. Yung pag alam ko, may mas madaling daan. Hindi ko siya sus- sinusunod. Ano nangyayari? Tanong niyo ko, ano nangyayari? I will end up traveling in a wrong way. At hindi lang yan. Mas lalo ako napapatagal. Alam niyo kung bakit? Grabe yung traffic na dadaanan ko. Have you experienced that? Kaya yung asawa ko, si Jinky, sinasabi niya, ba't nagwe-waze ka pa? Patayin mo na lang yan. Pa-waste, waste pa. Hindi mo naman sinusunod. Sabi niya, alam mo, kulang na lang dyan sa waste. Dapat maglagay sila doon sa program na pag hindi mo sinunod, ang sasabihin sa inyo waste, tanga ka kasi. No? Kaya inalig, na-traffic ka tuloy. No? Hindi ko sinusunod. Pero most of the time, tama si waste. Yes? 
Friends, the short, shortest way may not be the best way. Yes? Now, why does God allow detour? Bakit inaalaw ng Diyos yung detour sa buhay natin? Tanong niyo ko bakit? To train us to trust Him. To train us to trust Him. Because our way might be the shortest way, but it's a wrong way. Hawa ka mga kamay ng katabi mo. Sabi mo sa kanya, ano ang gusto mo? Short way or long way? Sagutin mo nga. Sabi mo, pakialamera ka. Friends, are you going through detour today in your life? Are you going through detour in your careers? Meron ba dito? Detours in your career? Detours in your financial life. Meron? Yung, yung relationship. Taglam mo na nag-aantay. Lord, hanggang ngayon wala pa. Meron ba dito? Parang ang feeling mo single forever. Friends, I want you to listen to this. If you are taking a longer route, God might be training you to trust Him. Baka gusto ng Diyos magtiwala ka sa Kanya. And most of the time, God uses detour as a better doorway to your destiny. Can we read this all together? Let's read the other slide. God's way may not be always the shortest way, but God's way will always be the best way. Yes? Sikuhin mo yung mga katabi mo. Sabihin mo sa kanila, God's way is the best way. That's why you need to trust God's way. Now let's go to the second thing about the cross. Second thing that Jesus' cross redeems us from, it redeems faith in times of doubt. Sabihin nyo nga, in times of doubt. Alam nyo ko ako si Jesus, Itong araw na to, Friday, we, we always remember the death of Jesus. And He was on the cross on a Friday night or a Friday afternoon. Kung ako si Jesus, I will doubt my mission. I will doubt my purpose. Bakit? Kasi yung mga mahal niya sa buhay, yung mga kakilala niya, na, dating sumusunod sa kanya ngayon, iniwan na siya. Hindi lang yan. People ridiculed Him. People mocked Him. Let's, let's look at Luke 23. And it says here, The people stood by and watched. The rulers, meanwhile, sneered at him and said, He saved, parang, parang palipat-lipat yung, <laughs> may sariling isip yata itong TV ito. Yun. He saved others, let him save himself if he is the chosen one, the Messiah of God. And even the soldiers jeered at him, as they approached to offer him wine, they called out, If you are king of the Jews, save yourself. He was mocked. Mga sundalo, ng mga tao, ng mga rulers. At hindi lang yan. He was mocked by one of the two thieves. Let's read this together. Luke 23, 39. Now one of the criminals hanging there reviled Jesus, saying, Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. Pero ito may pinakamasakit sa lahat. Si Jesus iniwan ng kanyang mga kaibigan. If you read the scripture, nabasa niyo ba doon na sila Pedro nandoon sa paanan ng krus? Nakita niyo ba? 
Sino sa inyo nagbabasa ng Bible? Sino sa inyo nakakita na ng Bible? Hindi nyo sila makikita. Hindi nyo sila makikita. Kaya grabe yung pinakamasakit yun. Pero eto yung pinaka, pinakamasakit. Before Jesus, or before this event in the cross, bago dumating ito, you know, Jesus was a superstar. Sabi nyo nga, superstar. Bakit? Kasi si Jesus, ang dami niyang pinagaling. Tama? Ang dami niyang pinagaling. There is this, itong, itong may isang lalaki na hindi makarinig. Anong ginawa ni Jesus? Sa pamamagitan ng kanyang banal na dura. Alam niyo ba yung banal na dura? Ha? May isang de- deaf man. Alam mo, ginawa ni Jesus? Sabi niya, gusto mong gumaling? Oo. Paano kayo narinig? Ano? Sumagot pa. Pero, <laughs> pinagaling niya, ano sabi niya doon sa Biblia? Ito yung narinig ng mga tao. Dumura sa lupa. Tapos anong ginawa? Nilagay sa tenga. Ano nangyari? Gumaling. Si Stevie Wonder, pinagaling din ni Jesus. Nando si Stevie Wonder, kumakanta ng My Sherry and more Brighter than the sun day Pinagaling din Jesus. Nakakita. Merong isang lalaki. Mas magaling si Jesus kaysa kay Jeannie. Merong isang lalaki. Merong withered hand. Depren siya yung kamay. Napagaling ni Jesus. He just stretched the man's hand. Yung kilala ko si may kilala ko si Jeannie, pinagaling niya yung isang yung isang may depresya sa kamay. Yung ang sakit niya, hindi niya makontrol yung kanyang kamay, ganyan nakaganyan siya. Tapos sa araw nakita niya yung isang bote, kiniskis niya. Hinawakan niya yung bote. Nakiskis tapos may lumaba. Sabi sa kanya, "Anong kahilingan mo? Ibibigay ko sa iyo." Sabi niya, "Sige, pwede ba?" Ang tagal tagal na akong pinapahirapan nito, pwede ba itong kanan ko gawin mong katulad dun sa kaliwa? Sabi niya, your wish is my command. Sabi niya, sandali, sandali, baliktad, baliktad. Ah, baliktad ba? Sandali, balik mo nalang sa dati. Binalik. Si Jeannie. Pero si Jesus, nung pinagaling yung mama, he just stretched out his hands. Friends, before Jesus died on the cross, he was a superstar. But now, Friday, he is dying as an ordinary criminal. Kung ako siguro si Jesus, I will be doubting my, my mission. I will be doubting my purpose. I will be doubting my power. And you know, I, I've experienced that in my, in my preaching life. Sino, sino sa inyo rito ang naka ng Saturday Feast sa Festival Mall? Pwede ba makakita yung mga kamay na naka ng Saturday Feast? You know, before becoming a preacher in, fest, in South Mall, ang aking feast ay sa Festival Mall every Saturday. Every Saturday. And you know, for the past four years, we try to really grow the feast Hindi kami makaalis dun sa 300 mark. Laging hanggang dun lang kami sa 300 tao. At ginagawa na namin lahat. Ginagawa na namin. Palakihin. Kung ano-ano ng pakulo ang ginawa ng peace builder doon. E yan yung, yan yung kung ano-ano na yung pinagsusuot ko. If Bo Sanchez was known as the a preacher in blue jeans, James Nicholas was known as preacher in colored jeans. Bakit? Kasi tingnan niyo yung mga sinusuot ko doon para lang maraming umatin sa face namin Saturday. Sige nga, pakita niyo nga. Ayan. Nagpuputi akong pantalon. Hindi lang yan, nagigreen pa ako ng pantalon. Merong pang, sige, pakita mo lang. Blue. Merong red. May orange. May yellow, lahat na sinuot ko. Pumunta lang yung tao. At hindi lang yan, nag-costume pa ang peace builder nyo. 
Nag-costume? Yung isa, yung isa, yung isa muna. Yung... Yan, nagka-Iron Man. Tapos eh, ito yung nakamatindi dito kay Iron Man. Yung hiniraman ko kasi na costume, ang liit. Naging Baymax. <laughs> Pero alam nyo, December 2016, Aaron met with all of us builders and he told us that we need to close down some of the feast. And one of the feast na kailangan isara ay ang Saturday feast. Saturday feast. Alam nyo, nung nag-usap kami nila Aaron at sinasabi na kailangan isara yung Saturday feast, in my prayer time, hindi nakikita nung asawa ko, hindi nakikita nung iba, pero pag ako na lang, nalulungkot ako. Alam niyo kung bakit? Kasi bilang lalaki, my, my identity is attached to my work. My identity is attached to what I do. Ganyan yung mga lalaki. Tama ba? Mga lalaki, tama? Pag maganda yung trabaho mo, maganda, kita mo, ay, taas ng tingin mo sa sarili. Yes? Pero pag nawalan ng trabaho, bumabagsak. Sino nakaka-relate dito? Tapos nga kami ng mga lalaking nakaka-relate. Sa babae, hindi problema yan. Yes? Ang babae, ang identity nila nasa relasyon. Kaya pag hindi nag-work yung relasyon, ano nangyayari? Bagsak ang mundo ng babae. Tanggalin mo ng trabaho yan, okay lang. Pero pag may problema sa relasyon, laking problema. Sa amin, di ba? Kapag problema ka sa relasyon, hindi masyado sa aming mga lalaki. Pero tanggalan mo ng trabaho, bagsak ang mundo. So, we closed down Saturday feast and it's a heavy heart for me. But, after a while, Arun asked me, sabi niya, James, can you open a feast in South Mall? Sabi niya, tagal kong pinagdasalan ito. Tagal niyang pinagdasalan. Mga 10 minutes. Ganun katagal. Sabi niya, pinagdasalan ko yan. Mag-open ka ng feast sa South Mall. And the same year, we opened the feast in South Mall. And to make the short story long, baliktad, <laughs> make the story short. Ngayon, yung South Mall, we're averaging a little less than a thousand every Sunday for two sessions. Friends, are you doubting your purpose? Are you doubting your mission? Are you doubting God's promises for you? Maybe ang promise sa'yo ng Diyos, provisions. Kaya lang, pag tinitignan mo yung wallet mo ngayong araw na ito, kaya lang makapal dahil sa resibo. Maybe God promised stability to you. Kaya lang, yung opisina nyo magre-relocate, tapos ikaw na lang hindi sinasabihan kung saan kayo lilipat. God promised one true love for you. Kaya lang, pag tinitignan mo yung mga kaibigan mo, halos sila nagsisipag-asawa na, pero ikaw ang piling mo, yung mapapakasawa mo, parang hindi pa pinapanganak. Maybe God promised healing for you. Kaya lang pagpunta mo sa doktor, and sabi ng doktor, Sir, I have a good news and bad news for you. Sabi mo, what's, what's the good news? Sir, the good news is this. You have two months to live. Sabi bad, good news yan? Bad news yan eh. Good news ho yun. Ano yung bad news? Two months ko na kayong hinahanap. <laughs> Friends, are you doubting God's promises for you? Are you doubting your mission in your life? Friends, listen to me. God allows difficulties to 
in your heart, in your mind about the reality in your life. Sometimes, God allows difficulty so that He can show to you His love and power when He show up to your situation. Darating ang panahon makikita mo. Darating ang Diyos. Maaring may sinara siya sa buhay mo. Pero meron siyang bubuksan na mas maganda at lalo ka mapagpapala sa buhay mo. Yes? And when God closes a door, He opens not a window. He opens a gate. Kasi, pag nakinig ka sa Kanya, pag sumusunod ka sa Kanya, pag naniniwala ka sa pagmamahal Niya, pagpapalain ng Diyos sa buhay mo. Amen? Siguhin mo nga yung mga katabi mo. Sabi mo sa kanila, may malaking pagpapala na parang sa'yo. Now let's go to the third one, the third and last. The cross redeems hope in times of despair. Sabi niyo nga, sir. You know, I'm imagining at this point, Friday, si Jesus, she's so desperate breathing. He was desperate breathing in taking in air. Naalala ko nung bago kami ni Jinky, I, I met this, I had this accident. Doon sa bahay namin, bakanting lugar. Tapos, nagwawala yung mga, mga, mga malaking uso. Hindi ka. So, ang ginawa ko, umakit ako sa drum. Yung drum namin, yung drum metal, hindi yung plastic. So, ang ginawa ko, umakit ako doon. Bakit? Para tignan. Kasi pag nasunog yung bahay namin, tama yung asawa ko at saka ako. So, kaya lang ito yung pag ito yung pagkakamali ko hindi ko iningatan yung pagkakabang ko ano nangyari sa akin dumulas ako pag dulas ko to mama ito doon sa bilog na sa nguso nung nung drum hindi ako makahinga hindi ako makahinga ang sakit na, na, naranasan niyo ba yon tamaan dito gusto niyo maranasan ang sakit hindi ako makahinga pagdating doon sa ospital sabi nung nung doktor sabi niya sabi niya, misis yung kasawa niyo, nahihirap ang huminga kami, atakihin. Sabi, sabi, sabi niya, nagyan natin ng oxygen. Kasi bawal na hihinga, ito yung itsura ko, yung, yung pinipigil ko. Bakit? Kasi pag huminga ako ng todo, ang sakit, ang sakit. So dahan-dahan niyo, hihinga ko. Sabi ng doktor, kailangan oxygen. Sabi ni misis, sabi ni Jinky sa akin, pa, kailangan mo daw ng oxygen. Sabi ko, magkano ba yung oxygen na yan? Wala pa kaming card noon eh. Bago pa lang kami kasal. Sabi niya, 3,000 daw yung isang ano, yung isang oxygen tank. Sabi ko, hindi ka na oxygen? Okay ako, okay. Mahal eh, tatlong libo. Tiniis ko. Pero nung nagroon na kami ng trabaho, may card na kami ni Jinky, nung na-hospital ako, hindi ako makahinga. Sabi nung doktor, kailangan hulagin na oxygen yung asawa niyo. Sabi ko, kailangan yung oxygen? 5,000. Lima! May card na eh. May card. But you know, I, the, grabe yun, naalala ko yung hirap ko ng pahinga. And I know, I cannot compare the desperation that I'm having when I met that accident compared to the cross of Jesus. Compared to Jesus. Kasi si Jesus, if you, if you read what really happened to Jesus' life, o, o, dun sa nangyari sa kanya during Friday, Grabe yung bugbog na dinanas ni Jesus. Akin lang, si Jesus buong katawan. Kaya si Jesus, to nasa krus, hirap-hirap. Hirap-hirap. Desperate. Desperate. Why? Kasi pag nakapako ka pala sa krus, sabi nung theology teacher ko, pag huminga ka, kailangan hilahin mo yung katawan mo. Hilahin mo. Ibugbog. E, hirap huminga, bugbog na yung lungs. Kaya pag huminga si Jesus na ganyan, talagang, Hirap na hirap. 
hirap na hirap. Gusto niyong maranasan, yung, parang kakiting lang, yung naranasan ni Jesus niyo. Mamaya pag uwi ninyo, papapakaw kayo dun sa gay ninyo. Ha? Subukan lang ninyo. Jesus was desperate. He was desperate. But do you know what desperation does to Jesus? Ano ang desperation kay Jesus? Ask me what? Bring closer to the Father. Bring closer to the Father. Bakit po nasabi dyan? Let's look at the last words of Jesus on the cross. Nung nasa sa krusya, in Matthew 7, it says here, My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Lagi natin naririnig ito during Friday. And also in Luke 23, another last word of Jesus. Sabi niya, Father, into your hands, I command my spirit. Alam niyo, nung marinig yan, akala ko si Jesus, nagre sa Diyos. Why? Because of suffering. Akala ko nung una, nagre siya. Bakit? Bakit mo ako pinabayaan? Tapos sa huli, nag-in, sumura rin sa Diyos. Yun yung nasa isip ko. Pero alam mo, sabi nung teologi, that Jesus on the cross was really praying the Psalms. The verse for Jesus, galing ito sa Psalm, like the first one, Psalm 22 verse 2, it says here, My God, my God, why have you abandoned God in the book of Psalms? And also the last one, the Spirit, came from Psalm 31 verse 5. Anong ibig sabihin mo? Na si Jesus, nung nakapako sa krus, hindi nagreklamo sa Diyos. Hindi nagreklamo. Kundi siya ay nananalangin sa Diyos na nanalangin sa Ama, nagpupuri sa Ama. Friends, sometimes when everything in our life runs smoothly, ang daling magpuri sa Diyos. Tama ba? Ang daling magpuri. Napromote ka. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Nagkaroon ka ng bonus. Praise the Lord. Yung anak mo, lumayas, bumalik. Pataba yung bawit. Praise God. Pero pag problema na, we tend to leave Jesus and leave God. Why? Tatampo ka na. Bakit? Nagsaserve naman ako, Brad. Pero ba't niya hinayaan sa akin yun? Can you buy to the stand? Friends, this morning, I don't know what your difficulties are. I don't know what your hardships are. Hindi ko rin alam kung ano yung mga pinagdadaanan nyo sa buhay. But my prayer this morning is this, that, your, that during your hardship, that during your difficulties, sana ang maidulot niyan ay hindi mapalayo ka sa Diyos, kundi katulad ni Jesus, mas mapalapit ka Sa Ama. Friends, crisis should not move us away from God, but crisis should draw us to Him. Dapat yun ang ginagawa ng pagsubok sa buhay natin. Friends, I know it's not easy. Hindi madali. But if you look at the cross, you will see Jesus trusting the Father in times of detour having faith in times of doubts, and having hope in times of despair. I would like to end this with last question. Pwede pa ba? Okay pa kayo? Here's my question to you. What made Jesus, what, 
sa tingin mo lang, what made Jesus trust in times of detour, to have faith in times of doubt, to have hope in times of despair? Ano sa tingin niyo? Bakit kaya? They want to know why? Or how? I would like to shock you my answer. Shocking statement. Sabi ko dapat maarte. What? Dapat gano'n ha? You know what made Jesus trust God despite the difficulties, despite the cross? Jesus did not die on Friday. <laughs> Jesus died on a Friday. He died on Thursday. Little, little, no? little, little, na. Jesus did not die on a Friday. He died on Thursday. But let me clarify this. He died on a Friday physically. Namatay siya physical body. Namatay siya doon sa krus. But He died to Himself on Thursday. Kailan yung Thursday? When He was in the garden. Nandun siya sa garden. Kasama niyo mga apostolos niya na natutulog. Nagdasal sa Dito siya nakipag-debat sa mata. Nung sabi niya, Father, if you can remove this cup from me, tanggalin mo ito. Tanggalin mo. You know, in Matthew, it says there, three times Jesus went to His apostles, waking them up and asking them, pray for me. And three times He knelt down and He prayed. Father, if you can remove this cup, tanggalin mo. Three times. And Luke says that Jesus even sweated blood. Grabe yung ago ni Jesus. During Thursday, dito siya nakipag sa Diyos. Lord, tanggalin mo. Ama, tanggalin mo ito. In the garden. But, when he decided, when he did make a decision and decide to die to himself, at nagtiwala siya sa Ama, you know what happened? During the cross. He started to believe about what he preached. And that is the love of the Father for all of us. when he made the decision on the garden is to believe that God knows better. Jesus has his victory over the cross. Friends, what are your crosses today? It could be sickness. It could be problems in your relationship. It could be finances. What are your crosses? My prayer this morning is this. That when you go home, after debating so much about your pains, about your struggles, after crying out to God about those difficulties you have in your life. Sana sa dulo nito, itulad ni Jesus, during this Friday, ang masabi mo sa Kanya, ikaw nang bahala. You know better than I.
Can I invite you to close your eyes and bow down your heads? And I want you to listen to this song. I want you to reflect on this song. Trusting that God knows better. all our hardship and this morning we pray that like Jesus may we always say that you know better than I and all this we pray in Jesus name Amen Can you have people around you? Kumahal mo sa buhay ang katabi mo at sabihin mo sa kanila God knows better. Lakpakan natin na pero and see you again. Praise Jesus. Brothers and sisters, once again, let's give a hand to the Lord for Brother James Nicholas. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Let's all be seated, friends. Were you blessed? Amen. Thank you so much, Brother James, for reminding us that God knows best. Kaling pa ng kanta. Amen. 
Brothers and sisters, take a deep breath, everybody. Simula pa lang tayo. Friends, after prayer, after a powerful talk, we're now going to have that part of our recollection where we have presentations by one of our life ministries. In the feast, brothers and sisters, we have different groups that guide people in whatever age or life a journey they have, whether they're couples, singles, or youth, or even kids. Today, we are blessed to have a presentation from the singles ministry and the solo parent ministry. Watch their performance, but more importantly, listen to what God is saying through them. Brothers and sisters, please watch this.
Let's give a big hand again, one, again to our singles ministry. Were you blessed by their presentation? Yeah. At this point, I would like to, to exhort all of you in trusting to our God. You know, every time, every Sunday, Ito, alam ng mga asawa ko, before, pag, pag ako ay may talk every Sunday, hindi ako kumakain. Laging ano lang, tubig. That's, that's, that's my sacrifice. I know some of you, you, all, you also have your own sacrifices when you do something for God. Tama ba? May mga sacrifices tayo. Ako, yan yung sacrifice ko. And, you know, nagugulat ako because every time I will give a talk, ito, ako lang nakakaalam, hindi alam ng iba. Kasi ako yung nagpe-prepare noon talk eh. But you know, nagugulat ako when I sacrifice something from for God, you know what happened? Yung minsan yung talk na ginawa ko, nababago. And after the talk, a lot of people are being blessed. But you know, ako, mas grabe yung blessing. Tanong niyo ako bakit? Kasi unang-una, twice kung narinig yung talk, kasi ako yung gumawa, kasi ako yung binigay ko, pero ito yung pangalawa. Because God showed Himself during the talk. Why? Kasi ang Diyos, naniniwala ako, hindi magpapatalo. When you sacrifice something, when you give something to God, He will surprise you even more. Yes? That's why this morning, I I encourage you to sacrifice for God. I want you to put out your your love offering envelope. Meron ba kayong love offering envelope dyan sa inyong mga bulletins? So I want you to ask God, Lord, how much should I give you as my sacrifice for you in this Holy Week recollection? You know what you give here in Holy Week recollection? We use this for our Holy Week recollection next year. Kaya, kaya dito libre. Pansin nyo, libre. Pero dahil dito, kaya tayo nagtutuloy-tuloy at nakawalong taon na. Now, dyan sa inyong mga envelope, you will see blank. Ano ba to? One port ba to? One eight? Mayroong mga maliit na papel dyan. Mayroon ba? Pakitaas nyo nga. And this is what I want you to do. I want you to write on this papers your name and ano yung prayer intention niyo Maybe some of you, your prayer intention is may may sakit ka, you want to be healed, then lagay mo dyan, dun sa susunod na papel, baka financial blessing ang kailangan mo, you have problems now finance, in your finances, or maybe in your relationship, you're hurting, you're in pain, so sulat nyo dyan. And then, you, mamaya, pagkakuha nyo ninyo, I invite you to put all these papers in these boxes in front. I-shoot nyo dyan. Huwag nyo kalimutan yung pangalan ninyo, ha? Tapos ilagay nyo doon sa envelope, doon sa boxes natin. Pero yung inyong tights, huwag nyo ilalagay doon, dito. Okay? And then we will offer them to God. So are you ready? Are you ready to give to God this morning? Let's all stand and allow me to Pray for your giving and pray for you as well. Let's lift up our, our tithes, our offering, our giving to Jesus. Allow me to pray for you. Father in heaven, we thank you for blessing us with this Holy Week recollection for eight years. And we're looking forward for more of this where we encounter you in a personal way 
That's why this morning, Father, we would like to honor you with our giving. Panginoon, galing din sa iyo itong mga perang ito. But we would like to give you a portion of it. And we pray that you use this so that your work in our Holy Week recollection every year, Lord, will continue. So that more people will be blessed by your words. So that more people will be blessed by your love. Use this, Father, and bless this giving. And Lord, I lift up to you, my friends, as they give their tithes, their offering this morning. I pray that you bless them with a special blessing this, this day. Alam mo yung mga pangailangan nila. As they give this morning, Father, I pray magpatutok sa buhay nila. Na ano man nagdadaanan nila, magpakita ka, magpandam ka. And I pray that this coming days, you will surprise them with miracles and answered prayer. And all this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. Come, friends, with joy. Let's give our tithes and offerings to Jesus. Let nothing stand between 